My name is Mark Schreiber, and today I want to present to you my open source framework NIPF, which I developed during my PhD thesis at the University of Applied Sciences in Aachen. This framework is aimed for developers who want to build natural language processing applications um, in a more effective way than current state-of-the-art tools. Before we get started with the demonstration of the framework, I want to provide some background information so that you can uh, understand the uh, context of the project better. So uh, first, all the research results um, have been gathered in the um, research project ETL product. It's uh, funded by the German uh, government. So ETL product provides a specific use case. So we have the situation that a scientist wants to buy some product. In this case, he wants to buy um, some kits uh, which can determine, um, for example, an antibody uh, in various species. So therefore, he has to go to the website of some suppliers and he needs to search for this product which he requires for his research. But um, this, in this situation, um, he has to um, access many websites and uh, it takes a lot of time um, until he, can, uh, he will find his product. So therefore, the, there's a company which provides marketplace for the researcher and this company um, buys the products from the suppliers and uh, stores them in their warehouses and the scientist can go to their website and look for the product more easily because he can compare the products and search very specifically on one platform for his required product. However, the problem of uh, accessing and searching the data has moved from the scientist to the company and the company has to do specific tasks uh, while they buy the products. So they employ some domain experts and the domain experts inspect the uh, manuals attached to the products and these manuals are written in natural language text. So they um, need to read the document, um, write down the specific product information, for example, product name or the uh, species which will be detec detected with this um, kit and they need to store this information into the database. How can you imagine such documents? So let's take a look. So this is an example document providing some uh, product of the life science domain for the scientists. And the domain expert has to read the document and maybe he finds some information which I'm going to illustrate now. So maybe the document contains information here, here and over there and so on. So then he takes this information, so the domain expert takes this information and enters this information into some database fields which I'm sketching here. So additionally, this information might be aggregated into one field or one into many fields and so on and so on. And additionally, these information are related to each other. So uh, it takes a lot of time for the domain expert to enter this information into the database and um, if the uh, data warehouse wants to uh, provide more and more products, the company has to employ more and more uh, domain experts in order to perform this process. So uh, let's take a step back in order to scale this whole process here. Uh, the manager has to employ some developers which automate this process. But um, they need to process natural language data. So the developers, in this case this guy here in the background, 
um, process natural language text provided from the manuals and process the data and they derive the structure of the natural language um, from the brain text and finally they uh, perform some analysis um, which they can use to store the information into their database. However, this process here in the middle is a very complex process which I'm going to illustrate now. So, um, this process, if you look at code and existing tools, um, looks like this. So, uh, where you read a document, then you uh, derive the natural language structure, and finally you write it down. Um, additionally, here is an uh, analysis, for example, an information extraction analysis. However, this part here, so those few lines here, require a huge amount of knowledge, and um, this knowledge is hard to gain for the developers. So let's take a closer look at, into those steps, what they are. So let's consider this paragraph here as an example. Um, and in the following slides, I will show you how you can derive the structure of natural language with multiple uh, natural language processing tools. Um, the first step in such an NLP application is to segment the text into sentences and tokens. So here at the, the top, we do have multiple sentences derived from the plain text. And inside of those sentences, we have tokens. So each token is a word or um, maybe a punctuation mark to show that in a sentence ends here. However, this analysis might seem simple, but there are many cases in natural language where it isn't obvious to determine uh, if a um, an full stop is an end of sentence or not. The next step might be the part of speech tagging, where you uh, assign to each token here um, the corresponding part of speech tag, meaning uh, the grammatical uh, information of this tag. So those two tokens here, um, underlined, um, are assigned by a uh, noun, by a proper noun. So in a noun which points to an uh, actual entity in the text. Additionally, there could be the named entity recognition where you try to find named entities in the text. In this example, we do have three named entities. First example is Satya Nadella, which is a person. Then we do have Microsoft, which is an organization. And here's Microsoft again. So together with the part of speech text and um, the named entities, an information extraction application could determine that this named entity here, Satya Nadella, works for the company Microsoft. And with this information, you can um, create a structured information for your application represented as another graph. So, for example, you have Satya pointing to Microsoft. This the relation works for. In this case, it might seem obvious, but um, there are other complicated examples where it isn't obvious um, to derive this relation from the text. So in order to um, create all this information, the developer has to train uh, his um, NLP application. So he has to provide many, many examples. And uh, in those examples, we do have the information of 
um, natural language. When he has the, these examples, he has to uh, test which um, NLP tools work best in this domain. And um, this is a very tedious process in two points. For example, you have to annotate this data, and which is a tedious process, an error prone process, and additionally you have the training process. In order to make this process more effectively, um, the framework NLPF provides tools and frameworks uh, in order to support our developer here to build this application more effectively. Before we get started with the demonstration, uh, I wanted to let you know that this approach of NIPF is an approach which supports both parties in the development process of NIP applications. So we do have the domain expert, which needs to provide the examples um, of natural language, so he needs to annotate the structured information in the documents, and we do have the developer. And uh, current approaches don't bring both sides together, but NIP uh, F aims to bring them together so that they can build an NIP application more effectively together. So let's dive into the demo. Before you can train your custom NLP models, you need a project which contains your annotated documents and therefore you create a pom.xml file. So in this example I will show you a project which annotates documents from Stack Overflow. So uh, first of all you create your um, pom.xml file as usual. For example you give it an artifact ID. Uh, additionally, you can set up a group ID, uh, which we've done here through the parent model in this line here. Um, the first difference to usually in JAR project is that you provide a custom packaging. In this case, you use the packaging NLP models. And this will tell Maven um, that it will use a custom Maven plugin, which uh, trains your NLP tools based on your annotations. So the next thing you will do is add some dependencies to your project. For example, I add in this example a dependency to an I.O. Um, ODT writer and reader and therefore you can use ODT documents um, in your examples, just paste in your uh, natural language and then you can annotate it. Additionally, we add some further ex dependencies, for example, OpenNIP and Stanford NIP, and these dependencies will be used during the um, training process, and uh, the training process uh, searches in those dependencies for specific classes, which will be used to train your NIP tools and then in the test phase um, it will be used to evaluate your NLP models. So the last thing you do is um, you use a custom Maven plugin. In this case, you use the NLP Maven plugin over here. And additionally, you tell Maven that it's an extension. So uh, therefore, you need to uh, provide this line over here. So nothing really fancy happened over here. Um, in summary, you need to provide the custom packaging. Uh, additionally, you add some dependencies here in this line to read ODT files. And additionally, you add artifacts um, to NLP tools. And the last thing you do is provide uh, this custom Maven plugin. So now we can start to annotate our documents. So now that we've set up our project, we can add documents to the corpus and annotate them. Therefore, you place all your documents in the directory source main corpus. And now you see a bunch of ODT documents which have been already annotated. So in this example, I will show you 
uh, how you can annotate this document over here. And now we copy some natural language text from Stack Overflow, paste it into an ODT document, and then you can use it in the annotation tool. So um, on Stack Overflow, uh, you just search for your natural language data, copy all those lines here, just a question, uh, and then paste it into LibreOffice. Uh, just one minor trick, only insert uh, unformatted um, content here. And we also decided to remove all the code examples, so we just add the natural language text as it is. So now we can save this document and afterwards we can now annotate uh, the document. So in order to annotate these documents, we now start the annotation tool QuickBet Tagger. So it's a regular jar file. You can just start it with Java minus jar and then it will start up. So um, this tool is working with an Xbox 360 controller and therefore I connect my Xbox 360 controller and as you see the tool is telling me that my controller is connected over here and then I can start to annotate my documents. So let me maximize this so that you can see more of the annotation process. Um, first thing you do is open the uh, project, therefore you can use the menu button and open the pom.xml file you've uh, created previously. So now it takes some time to load the document, uh, the project, not the document. So now that you open up the project, you see two columns. So the left column um, over here uh, is um, there to choose the annotation layer. So the uh, quick pet tagger is able to annotate the segmentation part, also the post tagging part and the named entity part. But uh, I show all annotation parts in this demo. So first of all, we select the segmentation part. And then in the second column, uh, you can open a document. So let me scroll down. to the end of this list and there is our, our document speed up because of the listing of the pfiles.odt and then you can open up the document and it looks up the ODT reader uh, in the Maven dependency. So you can dynamically change uh, the dependencies to other file formats as well. So now the quick pet tagger shows you the document and at um, the middle of the screen, you see a stream of tokens. So this is the stream of tokens. And the currently selected token is the blue one over here. And the current sentence will be highlighted in green. And uh, other sentences will be highlighted in gray. So this uh, is not the current sentence, but those tokens over here belong to the current sentence. Next thing you see is at the bottom of the screen uh, where you see the document uh, in its natural form. So you see every paragraph in the document. Um, additionally, the quick criteria also highlights the current sentence as well down here in th with this green background here and the current token will be underlined. So now you can use the controller to move through the stream of tokens. And as you see, it updates the selection in both places. So um, 
as we already have um, NLP models available, you saw that there were a bunch of other ODT documents. The quick pad tagger also suggested uh, annotations. So it currently was able to detect this end of sentence here. So it was able to uh, remove the dot from directory and also uh, recognize this end of sentence here. However, it could be that you didn't provide enough training data yet. So maybe you would have uh, such a situation where the end of sentence has not been segmented from directory. So therefore you can press and hold the left trigger and then you see this little box over here where you can split this token into multiple tokens. So for example, I need to split up the dot of the uh, here. So I just press A and then I have two tokens out of it. So in order to annotate the end of sentence here, which is also missing, just press A and then you get this vertical bars. So then you move to the whole document and check for errors in this case. But I think the rest looks fine and we, oh no, here's an, an arrow. So you just split the token and then move on. So just check if everything works out and yeah seems to be fine so when you've ready with annotating text segmentation you uh, just press start button and then the document will be saved next thing we do is annotate part of speech text therefore you just select part of speech text and then you see a um, slightly changed ui where uh, above each uh, token you see the assigned post tags in those boxes here and additionally you see above the selected token a spinner which you can use to select um, the corresponding part of speech tag so the, you can change the selection by moving uh, the left stick up and down and when you decided um, to select the verb, verb form or change it you just select one and just press A and then the quick pet tagger moves to the next or previous token. So um, yeah you basically do it for every a uh, token in here, you have to double check if the annotations have been made um, correctly. So I think this should be not a uh, plural form, it should be just a proper noun here. So I fixed that over here. So I think Apache Commons FTP client is just a proper noun phrase. and yeah, I can move, check the other uh, part of speech text as well. However, uh, that would take too much time, so I'll show you the next annotation layer, and this is the named entity tagging. So um, now you uh, see uh, just a spinner above the selected tokens, and the spinner over here. Um, lists some uh, named entity types which you can select. So for this project we decided to provide multiple different things. So it might be a software application, a piece of code in the uh, natural language text or so code snippet. Uh, maybe there's a, you know, some library on organization on person. So uh, let's check that. So I have an Android app. I think Android doesn't belong to any named entity in this case. Um, FTP. Uh, it's an FTP directory, so it shouldn't be a named entity of those, those examples. But now we have Apache Commons FTP client, which is an uh, application. 
so I can press and hold the left trigger to change uh, the selection or to expand it so move the selection to the first token of the named entity then press and hold the left trigger move the right stick to the left stick to right and then I can select application over here and then you see when I change the selection to the next token um, the box over here indicates the those four tokens belong to the named entity application. So let me see if I can discover some further named entities. Oh, that looks just fine. And uh, when I've done, uh, when I'm done, I save the document, and then I can go to the next step. So now that we've annotated our documents with the quick pad tagger, we can now train our NLP tools based on those annotations. And therefore you can just use one single command to train the NLP tools to evaluate the best performing NLP pipeline. And additionally, this uh, command results in an artifact which you can integrate into your application code. So just start this command over here and now the, uh, the NIP um, plugin for Maven starts to train uh, the NIP models and uh, it should be done in a couple of minutes for our example here. So it's a corpus of roughly 10,000 tokens and should be done in two minutes or so. So let me forward this for you. So now the training process is finished and if you look into the target directory you notice a couple of files and folders. For example, there's this jar file over here, and this jar file can be integrated into your NIP application, and it contains the um, NIP models, which have been stored also in this folder here, and um, these NIP models will be used in your application code. So, let's take a look at an app example uh, application which use uh, these models from this directory which I actually contained in this jar file. So now our artifact is ready to be used in our NIP application and now I will show you how you can integrate the NIP models in any a Maven based Java project. So first thing we do is you add some dependencies and the first dependency is uh, your corpus. So just add it as usual. Additionally we want to read a txt file therefore we need a reader class in this example. Okay. IntelliJ is still indexing something, so I need to wait here. So we need the reader, uh, text reader class in this example. So it's text in this version. Additionally, uh, in this tutorial I will show you how to store this XMI file which contains all the natural language information derived from our NIP pipeline and the last thing you need to do is you need uh, some dependency um, in this case the plumbing framework which provides a description file for your best performing NIP pipeline 
So now we have all dependencies available and the next thing you do is uh, you write your application code. First thing, you create a reader description which tells our pipeline to read a text file and therefore I use the text reader class and this text reader should read the file data.txt and this data.txt file contains the natural language text from our example question on Stack Overflow. So just draw this one here in, in local variable. Additionally, we need a writer description and in this case the writer description should store a XMI file and this XMI file uh, contains the natural language information in an XML format and the file should be stored into the current directory and additionally we introduce a local variable here and now we can run a pipeline so let me get rid of this um, run pipeline which reads our plain text and stores it as XMI and now we do have a pipeline through the UEMA fit framework which reads the data and stores it. However this isn't very useful because we just store the plain text as it is as XMI we now also want to integrate our NLP pipeline and therefore we use a factory, a factory method here that was performing pipeline engine description. This comes from the plumbing framework and this creates an engine description which will execute our best performing NLP pipeline in this scenario. So now we just hit run and it will uh, provide text segmentation and part of speech tags uh, in the XMI and now it's done. The log says it was successful and now we have this .xmi file over here and it contains all the information we had previously. So for example uh, it contains the tokens, the sentences and also contains the part of speech tag. And now you could use for example um, the Jake, um, the UEMA fit framework to provide further analysis to your natural language data. Okay, so thank you for watching this video and thank you for your interest in this framework. If you have any suggestions, if you uh, have any issues found in the framework, please visit the website, open an issue. Uh, so that we can improve the development process of NLP applications together. I also want to thank the uh, University of Applied Sciences for giving me the chance to do my PhD studies and I also want to thank the German BMDF um, to funding the research project ETL Corona.